Hello. In a moment, I'm going to demonstrate one of the alleged secrets or mysteries of Freemasonry. For about 20 years, I've been researching the origins and meaning behind Masonic ceremonies and regalia, and wondering what it is we're doing in our proceedings, why it's there, and where it came from. Freemasonry has a traceable history that extends back for at least three to four hundred years, beyond which things become a little more uncertain. Every new member is told that Freemasonry is built on a system of allegory. Now an allegory is a story that is hidden beneath or illustrated by another story. So in our proceedings we're doing one thing, but we're actually communicating or illustrating something else, which raises the question, what is that something else? What is that other story? This is something that I've been trying to unravel. My research reveals that everything in Freemasonry is there for a purpose. It's not there by accident. It was deliberately contrived and put there. As an example, let's look at one item of regalia, the apprentice's apron. It has a rather unusual outline. This raises two immediate questions. Why is it this peculiar design and what inspired it? Many of the stonemasons of the medieval period were probably quite illiterate. Yet, as we can see, especially in monuments across Britain and Europe, they were extremely skilled, producing works that are both visually stunning and elaborate. It's also clear that the most skilled amongst them had a good understanding of certain processes of geometry. The design of the apron we have today was originally set down some 200 years ago. It's very plain, usually white in colour, to signify that the wearer is new to Freemasonry and has much to learn. The shape is basically a square surmounted by a triangular flap. Long strings pass around the body of the wearer and tie at the front close to the apex of the triangle to keep the flap in a vertical position. It is stressed to the new member that when the lodge meets he must keep that triangular flap upright. This is believed to have been the origins of the expression keep your end up. Imagine that a stonemason knows that he has to end up with a block of stone of a certain size and that to achieve it, it must be double that size when he starts. Measuring tapes had not been invented, so he needed a simple means of remembering how to solve that problem. This is where a link with the unusual design of the apprentice's apron may well have originated. It's recorded on a work from ancient Greek philosophy known as Plato's Meno and involves the principal character known as Socrates. I will paraphrase what's in the meno. The story starts with Socrates in conversation with a merchant named Meno. They are discussing the subject of virtue and Socrates points out that an individual has a built-in ability to reason even when he hasn't been educated in a particular subject. He seeks to demonstrate that ability using a young slave boy who is employed by Meno. Using a stick, Socrates draws the outline of a square in the dust on the ground and says to the boy, let us assume that each side of the square measures two cubits. How big will the square have to be to double in size? The boy reasons the answer is four, being double that of two. Socrates then states that if the sides were four cubits, the area would be 16 square cubits, which is four times what they now have. So that cannot be the right answer. The boy, believing that he has seen the error of his reasoning and knowing there is only one whole number between two and four, immediately responds the answer must be three. Socrates points out that isn't right either, as I'm sure you can all see. The boy is now very confused. Socrates then draws a diagonal line across the square and points out that each of the two triangles must represent half the area of the square. The boy agrees. So Socrates draws a diagonal line across the remaining corners, resulting in four triangles within the square. Socrates notes that each small triangle must represent exactly one quarter of the area of the square, and, yet again, the boy agrees. So Socrates states, if one exactly reconstructs the four triangles on the outside of the original square, then the area inside the new square will be double that of the original square. And the boy agrees. Little doubt then, 
it was the origin of the design of the apprentice's apron that we have today, or that the apprentice was admitted on the square. Abbot Suger, during the construction of St Denis Cathedral near Paris, the first to be built using the then new technology we know as the Gothic arch, writing to one of his ecclesiastical colleagues in Germany around the year 1140, is noted to have stated that this method of doubling the size of a square using simple geometry was one of the great secrets known by the Masons. This was probably one of the very earliest lessons a young apprentice might have had to learn and commit to memory. Little doubt then, it was the origin for the design of the Masonic Apprentice's Apron that we see today, or that the apprentice was admitted on the square. What you have just seen is a lecture in ancient philosophy as recorded by Plato in the Meno and illustrated by Socrates, two of the fathers of philosophy. A demonstration of simple and practical geometry. A known trade secret of the stonemasons at the start of the Gothic era in the early medieval period. And yet another allegorical comparison. The slave boy knew nothing about geometry and was receiving instruction from his master Socrates. An apprentice stonemason in the medieval period would be instructed by his master, a master mason. A Masonic apprentice will be instructed by the master of his lodge. All this information is gained from one simple image of the shape of the Masonic apprentice apron. Freemasonry, it seems, is a virtual university. It provides education and knowledge known as the liberal arts, philosophy, history and moral encouragement. And it's all as significant today as it was three to four hundred years ago. As I've already stated, everything in Freemasonry is there for a purpose. And I hope this simple demonstration helps to illustrate that. What we have seen is one short story. But behind every item of regalia and every ceremony, there is another story. Just imagine what else there is to discover in Freemasonry. What I've so far uncovered is revealed in my fourth book, Freemasonry Decoded. I hope you found what I've just conveyed interesting and maybe even thought provoking. Thank you for watching and listening. Goodbye.